Bungie will be giving Halo fans a lot to look forward to in 2009, including the Halo 3 Mythic Map Pack, which includes three brand new multiplayer maps for Elites and Spartans to romp around on. First up, we have Assembly, a circular map situated inside a massive Covenant structure. Assembly gets its name from the Scarab assembly line overhead, but taking a moment to see the sights is a great way to end up dead in this open arena. Assembly is structured around a large central chamber, where quick players can grab active camo and the gravity hammer. Radiating out from the center are four elevated walkways that connect to the structures on the rim of the arena. These walkways put you in good position to rain bullets and grenades onto enemies on the ground floor. However, your elevated position will leave you exposed and vulnerable to rifle fire and ambushes from below. Players can quickly jump between these two levels, making for frantic, vertically dynamic firefights. An array of weapons, grenades, and equipment is littered about this central area, but the ever-important rocket launcher is stashed away in a tower on the periphery. Accessible by grav lift or sneaky side ramp, this tower allows you to survey the two base structures. Each of these bases contains two levels, and players can use ramps and grav lifts to travel between them and get the drop on their foes. The circular layout and small size make Assembly a great choice for frantic Slayer matches, as well as hotly contested Oddball and Capture the Flag contests. It looks and feels similar to Midship, the enclosed Covenant arena from Halo 2, and plays a bit like the multi-level Madness of Warlock, another Halo 2 map, but you'll surely find that Assembly cranks out its own special brand of mayhem. Next up is Orbital, a cluttered, claustrophobic map that spawns two decks of the Quito Space Tether. Much like the opening levels of the Halo 2 campaign, combat often plays out in fierce pitched encounters as players maneuver through the tight corridors. The two base areas are actually right next to each other at the end of the two U-shaped decks, but you'll have to traverse the long corridors if you actually want to come face to face with your opponents. A pair of mongeese in each base can spice things up for skilled drivers, but skirmishers are more likely to be won and lost with battle rifles and judiciously thrown equipment. The bottom curve of the U will be hotly contested as teams vie for the sniper rifle and rocket launcher, but everyone will have to beware the gaping pit that isn't as easily jumpable as it appears. The small, asymmetrical layout makes Orbital ideally suited for tactical Team Slayer battles and one flag CTF and the cluttered hallways and closable base doors ensure that victory won't be easily won. The third and final map, Sandbox, is in a class by itself. Where Orbital and Assembly are focused on fast-paced action, Sandbox fancies itself the ultimate Forge playground. Building on the success of its spiritual predecessor, Foundry, the Sandbox map offers three unique arenas to play with. The first is a flat, open area dotted with massive blocks and surrounded by banked sand dunes. Two bases at either end will tempt CTF players to hop in a mongoose, warthog, or brute chopper and make a run, but go too far afield and giant laser monoliths will blast you to smithereens. The central structure in this area holds more than an overshield, it's also a gateway to the large underground vault. Removing a key stone in Forge will allow you to fly down a tunnel to a wide open arena custom made for Griffball, a popular variant of Assault that plays a bit like rugby with gravity hammers. The high ceilings and ample floor space are perfect for crafting unique grip ball courts, but even the empty arena makes for some great matches. The last area of Sandbox is a vast open field that sits in the sky above the dunes and vehicles of the ground level. Accessed via teleporter and forge, the skybox is a blank slate just waiting for forge enthusiasts. Falling from a structure here will kill you, and this hazard adds a whole new dimension to map making. The three areas of Sandbox each offer unique creation opportunities, and new Forge items like a golf set, complete with club, ball, and hole, are just the icing on the cake. There's incredible potential for new game and map variants, and Bungie is planning on promoting the best ones so that everyone can enjoy the fruits of Halo 3's vibrant community. The Mythic Map Pack will be available to folks who purchase a limited edition copy of Halo Wars, out March 3rd in the US. But everyone else will have to wait until the pack hits Xbox Live Marketplace for 800 points sometime this spring.